Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Give me one. <clears throat> Here, hang on a sec. <laughs> I was just thinking this is probably making a really weird silhouette. <laughs> totally cool. I will hold that behind my <laughs> No problem. It's uh, so I'm here with Bruce Tim, the executive producer of Just League Gods and Monsters. So what can you tell us about this film? Uh, it's kind of an alternate universe version of the classic Justice League, uh, specifically Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Um, the idea is going back to the very moment of Superman's conception on Krypton. Um, he's not the son of Jor-El, he's the son of General Zod. And that kind of, that one little bit kind of changes the entire universe. So uh, it was just kind of a um, kind of a way to kind of shake things up and kick the table over and see what happens and have fun. Awesome. So there's different designs for these characters. Were you a part of that to kind of... Oh yeah, I was, I was the... <laughs> I, did, I didn't really want to, but I was. it kind of became my job to kind of redesign uh, the, the big three, and uh, it was kind of fun and also challenging and scary at the same time. I mean, Superman was really tough because the only thing I knew about him was that I didn't want him to be dressed like a traditional superhero. I didn't want him to be wearing tights and, you know, the, his underwear on the outside and the big ass on his chest. Uh, so I thought, okay, that's all well and good, but then what is he wearing? And I kind of ended up just going really, really simple and streamlined. He's basically just wearing like a tight shirt and jot... Uh, tight pants and, and jack boots and the big leather cape or leather coat um, and it just kind of seemed to fit with him because he's kind of an imposing not really a fascist but it definitely the, the look of him kind of has like a fascist kind of look, a look to it so um, it kind of fit the whole morally ambiguous or ambiguous uh, vibe that I was trying to go with him so um, yeah Awesome. So also you obviously were a big part of DC Animation, like kind of the right. renaissance of DC Animation. Uh -huh. So how do you feel that the more DC Animated shows now are targeted towards kids? Um, I think it's great. I mean, that's, I think that's the great thing about these characters in general, or you know, whether it's DC characters or Marvel characters, is that um, they've been around for so long that there's been whole generations of people who've grown up with those characters and are now, you know, my age or even older who still love those characters but they want something that they can watch on, on an adult level but at the same time they want stuff that their their kids can watch and you know be like a gateway for them for when they're little um, so and, and almost all of these characters are adaptable to both either a more adult oriented storyline or you know very family friendly so um, I think it's great I think it's really kind of awesome that there's all these different you know age range versions of these characters. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Well, you Thank you. Yeah.